All right, my friends, all points bulletin, APB. Notice, pay attention, <laughs> all that stuff. So I was just on Lawnmower Ladies live stream today. I was lucky and fortunate enough to be one of the uh, video members on that live stream, and she gave away some GIS screwdrivers. And yes, you old timers, GIS screwdrivers, I got a cheap one, beat the old Phillips for Japanese screws, which have a dot on the, close to the X, and regular Phillips, they still work better than our standard Phillips screwdriver. Uh, anyway, she gave a set of those away and a set of uh, two quarter inch stubby drivers, stubby ratchets, for her 1,000 subscriber celebration. They're good for her. But in that discussion, that so that, that happened, but she made a piston stop for a uh, chainsaw or two-stroke engine or whatever so that you can get stuff off the crankshaft and stop the piston in its tracks and you can spin whatever you need to do, spin either way, out of a spark plug. It's absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to use this old torch plug that I just took out of a power mower engine. And what she, if I can do this, I don't know, it's going to be quite a bit of work. But I'm going to take out the porcelain and then what she did with hers, and I'm going to do the same thing, maybe a different, we don't know yet. I'm going to, she used a, uh, a stud that holds the toilet seat down and she used that uh, into the uh, spark plug to stop the piston from rotating. Isn't that brilliant? So, kudos to Stella. That's her name. Lawnmower Lady. But I call her the Lawnmower Lady. And uh, her grandfather was a master mechanic. And now she is too. So let's just see what we can do here. I don't even know where to start. Grinder. Okay, let's go. Let's cut that ground off of there. We can't hurt anything because it's a torch plug anyway, right? I'm going to cut that a little more. I'm going to cut it right off. Cut the stud right off there. Bit of an up angle on that bad boy, too. Stella's laughing at me already. Oh, well, that's fine. Now, I might have to go over to my other vice, which is stronger. I just had a brainstorm. Let's keep going with the grinder. Porcelain tough. I got a start on it now. My red pliers. Good, okay. Well, how am I doing? Now we got to get that porcelain out of there. I might go use the other vise. It's, uh, it's not mounted. This is a movable bench here. So I'm going to go over to the other side. Let me just uh, get that set up. Okay, I'm not going to move this toolbox out of the way, but this is the vice I use when I want to get rough with stuff.
and it's still slipping through. I might have to change my mind about torch spark plugs. Well, that's something's breaking up. Uh, I got a noise maker. You still watching? Sorry about that. I gotta turn you off for a minute. Of course, I hit record and nothing happened. But it wasn't that bad. I went in from the top, and then I turned it around, and I couldn't reach any more of it. So I went like this, and I took this little punch right here with the bigger hammer, and the rest dropped out. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go back over here. And we're going to see if we can thread that toilet bowl bolt in the toilet seat bowl bolt into this. Be right back. Okay, there's the vise I did the final breakout on. And look at those porcelain chips are everywhere. Makes you wonder how a spark plug could even be five dollars. Shh, don't don't say that. Okay, so back over to here, and I'm going to just get a few different ones of these. Every homeowner has these laying around me. <clears throat> so what's your mother gonna say, Billy? You ready? I got a, I got porcelain all over the shop. That might just do it. Like, like we're we're talking shaving her thin here. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tap that. I'll be right back. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, look, we're going to we're going to do the threads on the spark plug. And then I've got look what I've got for cutting cutting uh, cutting threads now. Look at the size of that. The neighbor is moving out and he gave me a bunch of stuff. I will never use that up. Okay. I don't know if I've got the right size of hole drilled in there or not. But all we can do is try. And if it takes a metal, three eighths, why not go to, well, the plastic, we'll try it on the, on a saw after. The second video. Almost wonder if I've got the right size of hole drilled in that, eh? Feels a bit stiff, but there's metal coming out of it and metal going into it, so. Uh oh. Working its way through. I just don't know if I should. I don't have that chart for uh, the size of hole you need for the tap for the size of tap. I just usually guess. Feels a little tight. Should I drill one size up on that? I think I'm going to. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I'm going to try one more size up now that I got the hole started. Eh? Mm. 
Yes, the computer's right over there. I could Google it too, right? There, that should make it slightly easier. I'm excited about this little project, you guys. That's feeling like a, a better setup. I gotta check the computer. 5 16 hole for a 3 8 tap. So, a 5 16 hole for a 3 8 tap. And that's what I moved up to. So, let's keep going. <coughs> There's quite a bit to thread, which is good, because I'm going to want to, uh, I might end up swatch, swapping the plastic stud out for a rounded metal one, right? That's a pretty long tap too, which is fine, because the plastic's not as strong as the metal. Just really cutting right now, man. How much further do I have to go? I got about another quarter inch to go. You guys are with me, right? I think it's going to work fantastic. I might even use this gooby right here because it's got the cool top. This is one of my favorite things, making homemade tools, guys. I almost got out my shaking brake to, to, to do the spark plug, but I didn't have a socket to fit on the end of it. Okay, Bob, I want to see you improve on this one. We're almost out. And we can have it uh, non, we can have it adjustable with a little small 3 8 bowl uh, nut and a washer too for, to set the depth. Are we through? Yes, we are through. Now we just have to build the thread. You can see I'm getting almost a full revolution per... Let's take it right out, clear it out. Close! Don't like cutting oil, but it does work. So when this is all done, as long as that plastic bar doesn't break off inside the cylinder of the two-stroke engine I'm working on, <clears throat> isn't that a beautiful thing? <laughs> Drop my watch! I know, it's an old joke, eh? Okay, let's just see how this fits in here now. Well, it's pretty tight. Oh, it's coming through. Yay! Pretty tight though.
Okay, where are we? Okay, we're sticking out the bottom now. I gotta clean this up because the threads are damaged a little bit by me whaling away on it. All right, well there's our tool. Now I just have to figure out, I'm gonna put a washer for a stop, or if I use that big boy right there, I don't know yet. So I might use this big boy too. I'll be back now, we're gonna refine this. Okay, there's a piston stop tool that they have online. And this is how I do things. You can do this. That's it. Okay. So I didn't want to bring this chainsaw into the into the filming. Because this chainsaw isn't going to be running for a long time, but now, just for show here, okay, piston turns. <laughs> okay, if you don't laugh at yourself, you're going to have a long life. <clears throat> Which is nothing wrong with a long life. Maybe I shouldn't laugh at myself, because I want to have a long life. Okay. Okay, piston no longer goes around and around. So now I need the tool to get that off. And I'm going to make one of those. I've got an old 11 16 socket sitting around here. And if I cut a groove into each side and then weld a pin into each side of that, take this off and if you look really closely on here it says right there off can you see that right there in the sunlight off and the arrow goes that way. I think the arrow's up there. Yay! Right, guys. This was too soft. Look at what it did. Uh, look what it did to the uh, edge of the uh, inexpensive right there. So I'm going to use a real 3 8 bolt in there. Chance I'm going to go to what do you call a uh, 3 8 bolt rounded end. That's how you make the tools. Prototypes. Okay, remember, this is a 100cc chainsaw. A smaller 50 or 36cc saw, might this might work. So I'm going to go to a, a bigger bolt. I'm going to round this off real pretty, just like in the picture on the computer, and we'll start again. All right, my friends, I tried three different bolts. <laughs> this one, uh, this one wasn't quite long enough. Can you believe that? It didn't have enough threads on, uh, the shank is too long. Although I love shank bolts. So then I couldn't find one that had a head on it. So I took this really cool looking Meister, but it's actually got a stretched thread about halfway up. And that's exactly, if I can get this on here, doesn't matter now, but it's got a stretched thread right here, and that's exactly where I need it. So now I've got this guy. It's just a really good quality piece of threaded rod, and, and that is the end I've ground off. And I'm going to put a slot in it so we can use a screwdriver on it if required. So I'll be right back. I'm going to use my... Uh, Holy moly, I'm going to use my, what do you call it, thing for the die grinder. Blade for the die grinder. Hopefully it won't be too wide a slot. Alright guys, now I'm going to weld a little tool that fits into that clutch. It was all set up and then I knocked it off, right?
Good. All right, my friends. Here's my new tool I just made. Not pretty. We're going to see if it works. It's a spare socket. Made with an AC stick welder. Now, this is where it gets tough, right? Because I'm, I might have to uh, put some lubrication down there and leave it overnight. And I don't want to do that! Uh, there we go. Best loosening compound on earth. Transmission fluid and acetone. And I think I'm going to put a little heat to it, too. Why not? Top cool and the bottom hot. Okay, socket, sizzling, that's okay, a topper, my 9 16 big boy, or my half inch big boy, yes, did you see that, oh yeah, now you were a little bit out of frame, that's okay. Stella, thank you. It's hot. <laughs> Better spray it with a little bit of water here. Real hot. Now, what I'm after. I want to see if it's the crank seals that are leaking or if it's a different seal. Okay. Glove or something here. Good. Oh, we got another plate? Oh, it's a cover. <laughs> Is nothing easy? Not back in the 60s. You still watching? Good. All this is going to happen just about when the battery dies, right? Good. Ah, now this is evidence. I've learned this now after working on a few saws this year because I've gone to saws 301, right? You see this fuzzy, fuzzy stuff? It's not around on the point side. It's just on this side. So now... I might even be able to do this by blowing into here. Look at that. I have a hose connected to the uh, to the carburetor breather. I'll zoom in, baby. Can you see that? Now I'm going to just take a rag and wipe that off of there and we're going to get a good look at the seal. You might not even have a seal, wouldn't that be sad? 
Now the last one of these I did, I noticed that the seal was standing proud of this ridge here and I just tapped it in. There'll be no tapping this one in. Okay, Klaus, I'm going to use your blower. Okay, so now we can take our phantasmagorical homemade do hummer out of here. Take this back in a half a turn. And then we just get our tool with a spark plug wrench, which is right here now. We take this out if we can. So there's my new tool. And here's my new tool. Seal. NFG. That's a metal seal too. Thanks, Della. I wouldn't have done it without you. So when I did the Pioneer saw, it had a bad crank seal too. And the flywheel side was full of this dark schmoo, which is just bubbly oil from the oil inside the crankcase coming through the seal right there, eh? Ugh. So I put the spark plug back into it so it wouldn't get full of uglies. And uh, so what I used... You guys know that's that's actually part of a spark plug, right? And this is an old socket I have two of or three of. And I needed the rods to be to fit into that to take it off counterclockwise. And and don't forget I've got the muffler side blocked off here. So that uh, and the carburetor is actually doing a pretty good job of blocking off the top end. And just by blowing on this tube. I'm getting enough pressure, so you can imagine how much that was leaking, eh? So interesting to me.